Events like these are super important because you get essentially the, you know, the decision makers of tomorrow in a single room being educated here during a week or two. And that's a huge opportunity to make them understand it's not only about technology, it's also about how you use the technology and what's the role of the human in it all. You have seen from my teaching style that I'm not the typical professor broadcasting for two hours, in my case, six hours, simply because I know that the demographics of students has really changed. Now, when I went to university, we were trained to sit in the audience for hours and hours and listen to the wisdom of the professor. What changes now to 2017 is that the students who are coming are empowered. They have been on social media, they have followers, they have an opinion, they're being listened to, they're being liked and unliked, and uh, you can't really expose them to two hours broadcast. I'm encouraging people to actually um, feedback to me their thoughts and then if they really want to deep dive into knowledge the internet the libraries they can go out and get all that information I'm a coach these days information coach and not anymore a knowledge professor So Smart Cities is a, a concept which uh, has, has been born essentially maybe two, one to two decades ago. It's, it's something which is really established by now, but surprisingly, we are still in a PowerPoint mode. Uh, the big question I'm asking you and the, the audience who's listening to this, has anything substantially improved over the last 10 years in terms of technology? And the answer is most likely no. And the reason is, is because to introduce new technology, which is which you need for making smart cities happen, it takes time. So we shouldn't panic. Uh, uh, you know, whilst the technology is there, the, the supply chain, all the, all the platforms, the standards, the, the chips and the base stations and the sensors and the IT infrastructure, it's all there. But then somebody needs to pick up on this, deploy it, use it. And it's on the user side that demand has not yet picked up. And the reason is because if you install just a single sensor somewhere here in the city, you will change fundamentally how this city works. So when you introduce new technology, you are changing the operational side of the city. And that takes time. Just don't lose patience. They will come in the next five years. One of the uh, biggest problems uh, between demand and, uh, and need is essentially that we are often just going halfway in executing our technology vision. Uh, take the example of big data. Uh, data is uh, accumulated from sensors, from the internet, from people. Uh, you get it to a data platform, you use a lot of machine learning and artificial intelligence on top, and then you build beautiful graphics, 3D images on what the data is containing, and then the question is what? What do we do with that, right? So what, I'm, what I've been arguing all the time, we not only need big data, we need big action. And one way of doing that is, is every time you invest one dollar into a big data project, you also need to invest one dollar into a big action project which comes along. And then you will close the data cycle and make something really useful of the, of the big data ecosystem. I work essentially not only at university these days, but uh, you know I do a lot of other things as well. Uh, among those being an entrepreneur with several companies, I'm also advising the UK government quite a lot. So I'm involved a lot on the policy work. I also do a lot of music. So in fact, I wanted to become a professional musician, but ended up by accident in, in technology. I'm really trying at King's College now to combine the arts world, the policy world and the technology world to actually substantially transform all of these worlds. The boundaries have been blurred between subjects, between areas, between times how we work, etc. And I'm just maybe really the embodiment of that all.